Okay, so here we are with lecture 5b, x-intercepts and complex numbers. So what's a complex number? What's the arithmetic? And what's it mean to be a root versus being an x-intercept? So we look for the x-intercepts of a parabola from the standard formula, right? If you have this to find the x-intercepts, you set y equal to 0 um, and solve for x. And when we did this for the last parabola, we ended up with a negative number inside of the square root. We have invented a way to deal with this, mathematicians have, and it's called complex numbers. So we define i to be the square root of minus 1, which means i squared equals minus 1. And a complex number is any number of the form a plus ib, where a and b are real numbers. Um, and then we just have the i floating around there. So, we tried to find the x-intercepts of this, and we got x equals plus or minus, oh, x equals minus 1 plus or minus the square root of minus 1 over 3. But minus 1 is i squared, so minus 1 over 3 square root equals i squared over 3 square root. We take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. Square root of i squared, that's just i, and square root of 3 is square root of 3. And that's inside of the video. Good. So, x equals minus 1 plus or minus i, i over square root of 3. So that's what we get. Um, complex numbers turn out to be really important if you're dealing with any kind of uh, cyclic behavior. So if you're doing electrical engineering, for example, or um, mechanical engineering, any kind of engineering where there's uh, cycles going on or oscillations from equilibria, you'll be using complex numbers a lot. Um, trigonometry in some ways is best done with complex numbers instead of sines and cosines. We're not going there in that class, but it's important to at least see complex numbers here. So uh, the roots of an equation 0 equals f of x, or any solutions you get. They might be complex, they might be real. Um, complex just means there's an i in it. The x-intercepts of function are where the points with the graph of the function actually goes through or touches the x-axis. So, for parabola y equals 3x plus 1 squared plus 1 has no x-intercepts because its graph does not go through the um, x-axis. It does have two roots, though. So a little bit of a distinction there. A root is what you do when you do the algebra. It could be complex or real. An x-intercept is when you look at the graph, does it actually cross or touch the x-axis? right? And so those are slightly different things. So the rest of this short lecture is just going to be about arithmetic of complex numbers, which is generally straightforward except for division. Addition and subtraction, just add and subtract like terms. So 2 plus 7 is 9. 3i plus minus 3i is 0i. So that's just 9. Subtraction, 2 minus 7 is minus 5. 3i minus minus 3i is 6i. Right? So 3i minus minus 3i, the minus minus becomes a plus, so it becomes 3i plus 3i, which is 6i. Multiplication, use FOIL, and remember that i squared equals minus 1. So if we multiply this out, first 2 times 7 is 14, inner 3i times 7, uh, 3i times 7 is 21 times i, outer, oh I got outer and inner mixed up, doesn't matter, 2 times minus 3i is minus 6i, and then last, 3i times minus 3i is minus 9i squared. We can simplify that a little bit. 21i minus 16i is 15i. And keep in mind that this i squared equals minus 1. So this is minus 9 times minus 1. So it becomes 14 plus 15i plus 9, and at the end of the row, that's 23 plus 15i. Okay, um, now to do division, we need something called a complex conjugate. So, if 7 minus 3i is a number, what's the complex conjugate? 
Complex conjugate, just take the same number and switch the sign on the i. So this complex conjugate of 7 minus 3i, you take the minus and turn it into plus, and 7 plus 3i. Complex conjugate of 7 plus 3i, you take the plus, turn it into minus, you get 7 minus 3i. Now the nice thing about these, and about any conjugates, is that when you foil them out, the outer and inner terms disappear. So first is 7 times 7 is 49. Outer is 7 times 3i, which is plus 21i. Inner is minus 3i times 7, which is minus 21i. And then last is a minus 9i squared. So what do we have here? Outer minus inner is 0. We have 49. i squared is minus 1. So this is minus 9 times minus 9, which is minus 9 times minus 1, which is 9. So we get 58 there. Nope. Slid off the side of the thing there. So outer and inner cancel out. Minus 9i squared. The i squared is a minus 1. Minus 9 times minus 1 is plus 9. 49 plus 9 is 58. So how do we do division? We need to get rid of that i in the bottom. What's the best way to do that? Well, we just saw that if we take a number, multiply by its conjugate, the i's have disappeared. So we're going to multiply top and bottom of this fraction by 7 plus 3i. Top, 7 times 2 is 14, plus 6i, 3i times 7 is 21i, and then we get 3 plus 3i, three 3 squared i squared, which is 9i squared. And we did this multiplication, that's here, so this is just a 58 on the bottom. So what do we have? We have 14 plus 6 plus 21 is 27i. Remember that the i squared is a minus 1. Minus 1 times 9 is a minus 9 over 58. And so 14 minus 9 is 5 plus 27i over 58. And sometimes we like to write that like that, where we separated out the i. So complex numbers turn out to be really important in a lot of applications, but they're really important in anything involving any kind of periodic behavior. Imagine a bridge, right, that oscillates a little bit, right? So you'd use complex numbers to, isolate, to analyze that. Uh, complex um, trigonometry is complex numbers. You'd see that in Math 113 or in Math 115.